Wow, Brett Favre is taking welfare money? Somebody check on Jason Campbell. Hey, get out of here, Robert Sarver. You don't call me that. Welcome to Open Mike. We like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I spill the tea in DC, so you know these jokes come from a place of love. If in fact, that's something I'm capable of. The jury's still out. Let's start things off at Wegmans, where the grocery store chain announced that it'll discontinue its scan app, which lets customers scan and bag items while they move through the store. And why is that, you ask? Because people have been using it to shoplift. Now, look at this press release. It is signed by Colleen Wegman. This order came from the top. You know it's bad if Miss Wegman herself is saying, you know what, y'all, y'all gonna have to stop stealing from me right now. I've, I've, I've taken enough L's. I like that Wegmans thought they could use the honor system with everybody. That is, that is adorable. Whereas most people looked at the scan app and thought, convenience, scammers saw it and thought, come up. Wegmans put the same amount of energy into planning that app that they put into planning their opening in DC. Kind of reminds me of this uh, hilarious video of recording artist W. Ellington Felton uh, being followed by a marching band during that opening. Don't mind me. I'm just invading the new Wegmans down the street from the crib with my army band. The new DC is so extra. LOL. Oh man, those pants were as high as the ones I wore in middle school. They moved into DC dressed like actual colonizers. Wegmans learned, though, a very valuable lesson. Shoplifters are always one step ahead of the tech sphere. Also, they learned the lesson that people are not to be trusted. That's actually probably the biggest takeaway here. Let's head to FedEx Field for this next story, where the Washington Commanders, speaking of people not to be trusted, they are being sued for $300,000 by four fans who were injured after a railing collapse during a game against the Philadelphia Eagles last season. According to the lawsuit, the plaintiffs, who are all from New Jersey, are seeking at least $75,000 each. They claim to have suffered injuries such as muscle strains, bone contusions, cuts, bruises, headaches, and other potential long-term effects, both physical and emotional, from their falls. Now, as somebody that's lived in New Jersey, they are a very litigious lot. You know how we watch shows and they have the lawyer commercials during, uh, during the breaks? They actually have lawyer commercials that have breaks of programming in them. I'm no legal expert, but the team probably should just go ahead and settle this one. I can't even believe it took this long for a lawsuit. I wanted to sue just from watching it. I wanted to sue from all the social media abuse I took from fans of other teams that this is my squad. That railing collapse almost took out fans and the other team's quarterback. More proof that FedEx Field is the trap house of NFL stadiums. I need to know. How is our stadium more intimidating than the team itself? That's not how it's supposed to go. That railing just, just gave out. It tapped out. It waved a white flag. It didn't even give two weeks notice. It just said, I'm out of here and quit the job right then and there. Let's hope that the team and these fans come to some kind of agreement soon. More importantly, Let's hope this lawsuit forces the team to do something to make FedEx feel less embarrassing. I'll be holding my breath like a Carson Wentz pass over the middle. Now, I chose this next story out of D.C. because it's both timely and cool. Timed entry passes, pun intended, for the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum will be available online starting tomorrow. The museum is reopening October 14th after closing for renovations. So proc procrastinators, and, and yes, I'm one of your lot, this is your alert. Get on this now. Now, if you've been in D.C. long enough, you remember what it was like trying to get pre-time tickets to the African American History Museum. That was like the lotto. I mean, Gambit D.C. and the Sneakers app all combined into one. It was harder to get into Fort Knox. Hopefully, this time, things will be less like a digital version of the Hunger Games. And I will tell you, may the odds be ever in your favor. Let's head to Los Angeles for this last story, where the 2022 Emmy Awards had some very memorable moments, both for the better and for the worse. I want to say congratulations to the great Cheryl Lee Ralph for winning her first Emmy for her role on Abbott Elementary. Now, not only did she win, but she gave the acceptance speech of a lifetime. To anyone who has ever, ever had a dream and thought your dream wasn't wouldn't, couldn't come true. 
I am here to tell you that this is what believing looks like. This is what striving looks like. And don't you ever, ever give up on you. Go ahead, Moesha's mom. I love seeing a legend get her flowers. And for the record, this is what, like, kind of kind of believing looks like. Like, like one foot into believing. This, this is what that looks like. Abbott Elementary writer, creator, and star Quinta Brunson, however, had her Emmy win hijacked by late night host Jimmy Kimmel laying on the floor during her acceptance speech and a comedy bit that went on for far too long. And I'll tell you, she's better than me because I had a sea walked and one two step all over Jimmy Kimmel if he pulled that stunt during my moment. Brunson had to step over him in a dress and she's tiny. You know what? I commend her for not climbing the podium and delivering a frog splash. The good news is he's been getting dragged for it all day. So the universe is handling that business for her. I do want to congratulate the night's other big winners, Zendaya, Succession, and Ted Lasso. Also, uh, Jennifer Coolidge, fantastic acceptance speech as well. The focus should be on the industry's excellence. Then one of these days we're going to make it through an award show without somebody playing themselves. Maybe next year. You know what, speaking of next year, maybe the Emmys can make it up to This Is Us. Oh wait, they can't because the show is over. It is unforgivable. Manny Moore didn't grow those age spots for nothing. And you know what, Manny Moore, if you're listening, you wonder what I love about you? So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start with the obvious. I love, I love the mother that you are. I, I love that you are still the most beautiful woman in any room and that that you laugh with, with your entire face. But most of all, I love that you are still the same woman who all those years ran out on a blind date because she simply had to sing. Yeah, what's up? My Jack's not bad, my Jack's not bad. My favorite story, Shirley Ralph's first Emmy win after a long and distinguished career. It was gonna be that or the Air and Space Museum since the rest of the stories were quite ashy.